starting off in a lab not knowing if he will come out alive to facing creatures of biological horrors. This is how one man shaped the course of an apocalypse. This is the story of change. Imagine this, it's the 2000s and the company you work at has proclaimed that the research they've got is going to change the world. The glaciers are melting and the team sent there on a recovery mission was ordered to bring back samples that will allow a deeper look into the possibilities of slowing down the constant melting of ice caps. The expeditionary team that went to retrieve the samples disappeared completely, vanishing in the thin air overnight. Multiple contacts were attempted to reach out to them, but all they got in return was radio silence. What now more than ever on the table is on the rescue team a full three months later, only for disappointment to arise when upon arrival all they found was two tapes, with one of them no thing. Left no further options, everyone went back empty-handed, writing off the deaths due to harsh storms and polar bears. But weirdly enough, as cautious as the team was, everyone who went on a search and rescue fell out lonely days later, their skin turning alarmingly white as if they were washed in paint. This was followed by a loss of speech and increase in animalistic behavioral patterns as a result of decreased cognitive function. During this time, the scientists battled for days to find a cure, but all they were finding is more problems. The problem was that it plays with the subject's DNA, making it almost impossible to track inside a human. From the outside, the infection was observed to contain six main stages. Initial infection. In this phase, the infected individual begins to exhibit early symptoms such as minor physical changes and alternations in behavior. This phase can last for days to a week, with the changes becoming more pronounced over time. Early Symptoms this character's physical transformation accelerates during this phase. They may experience significant alterations to their body such as growth of animal-like features, changes in posture, and the development of instincts associated with their new form. Intermediate transformation. Transformation accelerates during this phase. They may experience significant alterations to their body such as growth of animal-like features. Final transformation. These changes keep going and they start acting and looking even more like an animal. The final stage, stabilizing and adapting. After the final transformation, the character may undergo a period of stabilization or adaption during which they learn to live with their new form and instincts. Keep in mind they remember their past but they do not believe that they are the person rendering them brainwashed and conscious in a semi-comatose state. Now given a couple of hints throughout the game, we slowly realize that we are alone. Even though we are surrounded by beings, we still lack any human interaction. Myself knowing that firsthand, being stuck in my gamer cage, sipping on monster and reviewing your shitty fucking staff appeals, oh my god! Really do games come to this level of making a player feel alone. The best one I can think personally would be Cryer. In Cry of Fear, the game manages to make you feel really lonely by taking you through a world that's eerie and almost really hollow and empty. The abundant streets, dark corners, and rundown buildings give you a sense of physical isolation. You rarely find any reliable friends or allies as you play the game, which makes you emotionally lonely. The main character, Simon, deals with his inner demons and hallucinations, making it tough for him to connect with others. The game doesn't have a lot of conversations or interactions, basically think you a single interaction per week almost, which honestly, <laughs> I feel that. Last time I talked to anybody was with a painting on a wall, so I won't count this in. Even though Simon carries a mobile phone, he can't use it to contact anyone, which highlights how cut off from the outside world he is. The game's dark and creepy atmosphere, along with its spooky sounds, intensify the sense of loneliness. So Cry of Fear really brings out the feeling of loneliness, not just in terms of physical isolation, but by making you feel emotionally and psychologically haunted and alone in a world. We begin Cry Frozen in a lab, not knowing where we are. Our surroundings are murky as we try to figure out how we even got here. Piece by piece, well actually letter by letter, we can find out a lot about the lore just in the first level. The note you find around the maps is basically the only way you'll be finding anything about the lore. There are no recordings in the game, no voice lines, no shitty cutscenes. Only simple ones, but they are more like text based rather than anything. From a game design perspective, this helps save time and many 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 many
Also, we will be doing a funny and ranking every changed character we encounter in a tier list. Ones that are good go into A, and ones that are dog shit go into F. Also, I sent my tier list to Dragon Snow, who was at a loss of See words after seeing what I sent him. Opening the first few pages, we get this note that was probably ripped straight out of Google yeah, here, here, here. Who knows who's who knows whose notes these are from? You decide to read the page. Do not do contact with any of them. I forgot about this. Once you touched the them, you will immediately yourself. We're not told what we will do, but we will do something. Now looking back at it, there was obviously Puro hinting at us that not everyone wants us alive. Walking inside, we get greeted with five entrances. If you choose to go right, you will get out to the balcony, which looks amazing. Just without the missing floor part. We do not talk about the floor part. Where am I? Why is this? This is not what I signed up for. The city looks in ruins. But this isn't my city. Not this how I'm involved. The hallway is filled with medical notes and warning signs that await you as you stumble across it trying to figure out the passcode until you glance at one of them and it reads. Sorry for that plan. I have to sacrifice you. But, you know, life is not important to others, especially in this world. I love how Changed 3D takes a more ambiental approach to the game's lore. The notes basically tell us that not long ago, people resorted to sacrificing each other just to try and rush for the cure. It got so fucked up to the point that they stopped caring and just started crossing everyone off in the name of some greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. Shut it! There is a mention of five subjects disappearing, and when you walk into the door in the front paper, you find the same exact subjects now nothing Nothing more than some goo, with any interaction telling you to avoid your suicidal instincts. <laughs> you find a tape recorder on the floor, and as you click it, it plays. The bastard went back up to find the subject, but we failed to open the door. He knew about the live subject. We tried to catch him multiple times, but oddly enough, it's very smart. Now going outside, you have a great interactivity option letting you pick up garbage for people left behind. Ah yes, I love my future job being shown to me crisp 4K RTX. Now if you choose to go to the third door on the left- Wait, 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 don't stop, stop, don't open that door. Because if you do, you'll be chased by two goo creatures and probably caught off guard as they tear your health oh into obliterated pieces. My. Just stick to the others. Anyways, the code in this game are the same codes as in changed special edition, although I would love it to in the future updates be a little bit Bit more randomized but for now you can just enter the codes from chain special edition and after you do you get the most impossible chase sequence that has ever been known to man and i'ma be honest with you kiss me on my hot mouth this shit pissed me off okay like games usually give you a heads up or play a cutscene or do some like wild sound effect but a human who subject. clips through objects Slavery. just to tear your ass up that 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 that's a change 3d thing and i think half of the hate comments are just because of that one cutscene alone like come on guys even snow dragon not the little heart and pause icon there straight f tier i fucking hate that guy also if you get transformed you can press f12 to see the models and you can wander around exploring for more lore unnecessary why of course cool well why of course running out the door we get into another chase sequence although this one has new mechanics we explained last time just here it's a bit different see if you're a real cheeser like i am the cat waits a few seconds for <laughs> some reason whatsoever probably playing on oceanic servers or something and this like allows you just enough time to cheese through the entire run without even waking it up fully. However, if you really want to see how the AI works, it uses the slow, fast mode shifting. Basically, it goes fast for a bit, gets tired, and then chases you again when it gets rest. I like it, but it's not that dangerous. It's like D tier. Walking outside, you get your final introduction into beginning mechanics. Passing by a hallway, you'll get attacked by sludge. Just this time, you get a chance to fight back. It's not difficult to beat, so that fuck it, C tier, I guess. The game has high-paced moments that are awarded by downtime where you get to experience the beauty of of having a 3D port. I personally love the scene where you get to see the images in 3D and the entire city just puts it in perspective how lonely and how far away everything is. Cause those are flats. Basically giant buildings and you are at least a dozen feet above. Even the character mentions it if you step out to the balcony. James is a game set in the near future. Now we can estimate how far the future is with small hints being dropped around the game. With the most crucial one being that the polar ice caps have not yet melted. Now since we are approaching an ecological disasters in the real world, something that we we haven't seen in, in, in like the last time we touched grass. I whipped out some studies and my rough estimate is that we are in the end of the 21st or the 22nd century, not much further than that, which would also play greatly into how the plague spread so fast. Also ignore
though, did I mention the plague? We'll get into it in like <laughs> an hour, Lamau. <laughs> I asked Dragon Snow myself and he said, the future. Like, damn, damn, bro. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> now, through this, you may have seen me click on what these the funny red boxes throughout my gameplay. And I promise you, the game will tear your fucking ass out if you do not do that. You are absolutely fucking brain dead. These boxes are safe boxes. And no matter how hard you try to speedrun, the game is three times more difficult, even on normal difficulty, that you'll be cramming it more than a sweat that saves comes terminals in Fallout. So please save regularly. About a year ago, I did an analysis on the original changed game. And we mentioned something called Metacritic stats. After my video, the stats have gone up to an 8 with amazing reviews ranging from <laughs> furry stuff, XD, Lamao, to a dude who probably confused CSGO for changed. And I mean, he didn't he, he didn't confuse it. He got linked here trying to download some hacked clients or something because I do not know what he's saying, but like, <laughs> he sounds mad. Like, mad, mad. Also, a side quest. I found an Android port that was supposed to be available for download, but uh, I, I wonder why that's not available. I I, <laughs> I sure wonder why. Now, embrace your ears, children. Papanik has gotten some secret background footage and all of it is in crisp 480p to the APS. I managed to talk to the dev team behind change VD to show me some background footage of the game and how it works. Because the lead developer the world thing together with Alex told me some insider knowledge on what's next and you will want to know what's next. All of these models have been handmade inside Blender and since the game is still in a fictional city but everything was made in Blender, a program in real life, there's about like a 50% chance that change actually happened. The levels are designed with a lot of thought behind them. The lead developer the world thing has sent me a lot of great footage showing the behavior of these creatures in a set sequence. How every set plays with each other in conjunction and contrast of rooms. The pacing of the game is also pretty goddamn amazing. Yeah, there's jank here and there, but for the fact that it's free and made by like a small dev team so living off of tea bags in United Britain or somewhere, <laughs> what the fuck? I think it's more than worth your time. Again, a big thanks to the developers for the insight and now let's let's get back to the video. Actually, uh, well, it seems that I have forgotten something. Oh yeah, that's right. Did you only know that 95% of you are not subscribed and like 54% of you are? Yeah, me neither. I just pulled it out of my ass. But by this point, like, just consider doing that. I'm like, I'm, I'm just saying. I just, just like, you know, I'm just walking out to the next field. We get a room with a power shortage. The lights slowly turning off and on. Now the basic mechanic here is to move while the lights are off. Not that difficult, unless, <laughs> unless you're me. But don't worry, it's easy. I promise. Just make your way through. Wait, what? I hear what? No in-depth pseudo analysis of the creatures. I hear you cry. No worries, my dear child. It is coming. The level design has a hidden reward path where, if you like, you can go further and save time by risking all of it, but if you're caught, you'll be sent back to the start. So here's a bonus tip. Look to your right after you pass the first creature for a super secret gamer checkpoint, <laughs> which allows you to save spam your reach to the entire level. We have two different creatures in this level, the dark latex and the latex pop. The dark latex are extremely, I, I, I don't know, stupid, because if you walk during dark time, it's like they lose the eyesight or something, probably watching a Mr. Beast video, but if you're caught moving through the light, then you're vaporized into nothing. I'll read the standing dark latex is a D, not that threatening but uh, still. Moving dark latex into C just because they're more dynamic and the latex pop which shows up more as a scripted sequence but to anyone playing for the first time it will catch you off guard so uh pop you know fuck it beat here. Making it through the maze we are awarded with some downtime to take in the surroundings and there we meet our first passive set of creatures. The sleeping latex. I love how adorable these guys look even though they could kill you at any moment. It shows that as the creatures they possess a great level of pack mentality where they use their power in numbers rather than relying on size to win. It's a really well-made sequence and you can actually walk between the pillows. On my stream, which is linked down below, I thought the door on the left was the exit and was defiled by one of the creatures when I tried to open them. Walking through the door quietly, we are shown a small open area with a latex stuck in a jar. Kind of funny and no, no, stop. I do not want to hear anybody out. No, I don't care. Nobody, just don't. This can go two ways. With you venturing inside, triggering them by stepping on a dark goo and being set back into the stone age or choosing the door number two and same your progress. Be aware that these black puddles either transfer you or alert the transfers. These guys caught me off guard a lot throughout my gameplay and I must say, 8 here. I like the design. They're really well made. No one's being prompted with the fact that we aren't taking trend yet. We need to use the dark latex beasts from the toilets from all the places in the facility to open the door. Now a fair gamer warning. These creatures are really, uh, really fucking buggy. <laughs> so in case you find yourself resetting 50 times, it's 
normal, I promise you. But you should follow the green circles and then press control and press yourself basically into the glass jar just to escape from this level. But if you skip the latex puddle and walk inside of the bathroom, we are given a few photos of the transferring taking place with a clipboard reading. These biological structures of black gelatin are similar to single-celled organisms. They are composed entirely of a nucleus and a mass of fluid. In the beginning, there was small fragments of crystals coated in gelatin. At that time, the crystals had no fixed shape or mimicry ability and had nothing to do with the beast. But under our cultivation, part of the genes of these creatures suddenly awakened. In order to adapt to the environment, organs such as four legs evolved and their appearance increasingly became wolf-like. But it's not just wolves. Their genes are like an empty template compatible with the genes of all other living things. Confirming our prior assumptions on my previous videos, this latex is an ever-evolving species. Usually, evolution in humans and animals takes thousands of years, yet here it takes no longer than mere moments if the latex decides it's not worth it. Basically, this means that the beasts are evolving every second to be their peak form, and still somehow cannot see you in the light at the very uh, okay, <laughs> convenient times. Passing to the room, we enter a chamber of dead latex, a part of their life cycle that they used to reproduce. The cycle they inherited from plants, because they live with their lifetime, then pass on their knowledge and life after their death, which are the forms we see here. We also find a document which falls down during our attempt to pick it up in our Minecraft inventory, which in return alerts this flying dark latex. We only see them once during the game, and they work based on the like white latex puddle function. Not hard to beat, but they look cool, so like a uh, tier, why not? Destroying another keyboard, we can finally take a look at a clipboard which reads. Initially, no one thought that the pale virus would be so contagious. By the time we realized, it was too late. The virus exploits immunodeficiency in a human gene. We can't do anything about it. Typical drugs and vaccines have no effect on it. We have no choice but to start with genetic engineering, to try to correct our genes, but the effect will only be seen in the offspring. We do not have such time. By this time already, someone made the bold assumption that certain parasites could modify the DNA of their host to mutate it. Wait, parasites? Someone? Looks like somebody watched one of my change the low videos. Anyways, um, <clears throat> I'm done, done jacking myself off, let's continue. This is the first and the only boss sequence in the game. Now, when you hear the name boss, you expect a big buff dude, which, uh, not really. But unless you know one neat trick, you will have a really hard time beating this guy. Oh boy, I certainly hope there isn't a really scummy, cheesy way to beat the boss. That, would, that wouldn't be in the game, right? That, that wouldn't be in the game. Basically, all you do is stand between these four markers for 90% of the level and one take before the dire latex battle comes to you then you just do the same thing on the other side of the map you just beat the boss <laughs> the dark latex wolf is what they call a leader of the pack or any tiktok kid today on <laughs> an alpha male fucking hate the internet man where what he says is that being visible by every latex simply staring at you even though moments prior they wanted to eat you completely the wolf king is a great boss minus the glitch so ignoring that <laughs> very obvious glitch a tier easily walking outside we hear the tv guy now i do not talk about him until now but it's becoming clearer and clearer who this person is talking to us over the TVs. I left that initial dialogue so you can actually have some replayability, but he basically tells us this. Hey, can you hear me? It seems the screen does not have any problems. You're the kind of person who hits a brick wall and doesn't look back. But unfortunately, your efforts won't change anything. This is my last warning. Go back, become one of those latex beasts. Don't make things too complex. I don't want to spend a lot of time with you. It'll be better for the both of us if it ended early. Now, there's two ways this goes. Either you go back and become a latex, which is one of the endings, or you can go onto the blades that which Dr. K set for us. What? Dr. K? Oh yeah, that, that TV guy is okay. Am I gonna rank him? But he's really passive and only like attacks us outright in the beginning in here. So like, I don't know, beat here. I did. These attacks are really cool, I guess. This segment shows how slowly but surely Poro's English is becoming better. His transformation as a being making this more and more clear to us. He went from blindly believing in us to breaking down not knowing if he'll ever make it this far. Slowly losing his grip on reality, which he barely knows. Even <laughs> Damn, that, that the inflation really hits home, huh? Even though we did not get to meet him in this game, I really love how they develop him just through the notes. So I would say that Poro gets an S tier for the character development. Oh, moving on to the blades. This is where we come into our second chase sequence. Dr. K will drop a laser wall, which upon detection will transfer the individual immediately. So to avoid that, you will turn around and walk you back as if somebody just offered you free Bobux on uh, get hit by a car simulator or something. That, uh, making our way to the door, we barely get saved by a convenient power outage letting us pass unharmed. The design of the room is very well made with multiple different paths you can take to get back to the door. Walking outside, we are met with a disaffection room. This place is our first of two puzzle games, where we have to use the cones to trap two vents and leave the area. There's a way to do this, but since I used all my streaming time to make a cone church, I will now show you how to actually make this work. Step 1. Cover the first vent, then move on to the second one. Step 2. Hide behind the second vent, because that's where the creature comes out before the first one. Simple? Yeah. 
But for anyone not doing this for like a hundred <laughs> time, this is really a unique puzzle and will probably take you a try or two to get. So like, I don't know, you'll see it here. It's not that hard. These puppies you see are white latex puppies and opposite to dark latex puppies. Later in the game, run you through what both sides are, but now that we solved the puzzle, let's exit onto our final level. This is the hardest level in the game by far, and I've only managed to beat it by pure oh God, fucking luck. This. Now, the creatures in these boxes are what we call mimics. Mimics who copy your movement to every step, but have no fear and don't stay clear because to beat them if you spam your VSD keys really really fast, you move for one pixel while well, they don't move at all, which means that you can actually cheese this game through as well, but if you just spam it fast enough, you will have to make your way to the far left, making dark latex follow us, make our way back, then walk past it. First one is simple, and <laughs> it, it goes all downhill from here. When it comes to the other latex, afterwards you must trap the first one by going into this gamer corner and making the other one get trapped in a crystal. Oh yeah, uh, so if you fail, you'll be sent back to the start so far, oh, shit, oh, shit. trapping them behind crystals you will be met with like four mimics now and you will have to cheese your way through by playing this part of the puzzle like an actual rainbow six siege sweat wondering if the two pixels in your peripheral vision are far enough so you won't get transferred and after that you won it, it's over that is the end of the game but before we end the video let's explain some stuff The battle between white latex and dark latex beasts resides in the fact that ones were made as an antidote to others, but at the end humanity was eaten alive by both whom are left behind to battle it out to see who has superiority. And you can see this, if you look around the lab, if there is white latex, then there is no dark latex to be found, and vice versa. A very neat piece of visual lore and a lot of people won't even notice unless you dig through the map designs. And that's it, the entire changed 3D game has officially been analyzed. Thank you all so much for watching this and editor Nick roll the clip. Thank the changed 3D team for making one of our favorite games into a 3D reality as much as possible. What's next? Our next game. Its development has already started and we're working out the main story and game mechanics. It will remind you of changed, but it will be a completely new, exciting experience. Oh, what the fuck? Come down here. No, come down here. I need you down here. Oh my god. I think I glitched him. Yeah, I glitched him. Yeah, there is collision. There is collision, definitely. Oh, we got it. We got it. We're on the bookshelf, boys. We're on the bookshelf. Oh, hi there, friend. Oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant execution of the text letters, by the way. E. Ah. E. Ooh. E. Pepe. Pa. Pepe. <laughs>